Well, my name is Kevin Yallop. I'm the CTO for ACAMP, and I've been involved with microtechnology and nanotechnology for the last uh, 20 to 30 years, starting off in the semiconductor industry and then moving on to micro nanotechnology, specifically in the uh, late 90s, year 2000. And since then, I've been involved with setting up several different manufacturing operations for micro nanotechnology. And most recently, I've been involved with creating the pilot uh, manufacturing plant that ACAMP uses for helping its customers. And today I'm going to talk to you a little bit about uh, what ACAMP does to help customers uh, develop M&T based products in various sectors, including agriculture and forestry. I've just got to see if I'm the keys. That's the one. No, try that one. It's usually that one, is it? Okay. Uh-huh. Uh -huh. The slides will move forward momentarily. Uh, my talk is basically going to be uh, in two sector sections. First of all, I want to, oh, we need to get it to slide, slideshow mode as well if we can. Uh, why, why I think M&T is important in the agricultural and forestry sector, and then spend a lot more time talking about the kind of things we can do to help you uh, develop products in that sector. So if you just move on to the next slide. So what do we mean by micro nanotechnology? We had one definition earlier on this morning for nanotechnology, which I thought was excellent. Uh, generally where you have a, a structure or device where the active uh, component has a size scale of less than 100 nanometers. And less than 100 nanometers is kind of a large molecule or a very, very small uh, micro, microorganism. Um, <coughs> microtechnology is really where ACAMP operates a lot more. We tend to work in the microtechnology space and there we're talking about um, technologies where the active structures are typically less than 100 microns in geometry. And that lets us do all sorts of exciting things. We make micro machines, so an example at the top uh, left hand corner is a gyroscope. We don't actually make the chips but we then take those chips and turn them into real products by packaging them and creating, for instance, the uh, little device on the bottom left hand corner there which is a uh, a energy harvesting device which can use a, a resonant sensor to extract energy from the physical environment. A more recent project we've been working on is a packaging laser diodes to create uh, um, uh, systems in a package. In this case, there's a little laser diode chip in there, it's a cooler and a feedback uh, thermistor as well, and lenses and so on, so we can create a nicely collimated laser beam. An area that might be of, uh, perhaps more interest in the agriculture and forestry sector is our ability to do uh, microfluidics and now we're working on a number of different uh, projects for developing microfluidics chips and we're, we are actively in-house developing a microfluidics chip manufacturing process at the moment. The interesting thing with that is it lets you create biosensors which use molecules and other such nanoscale objects as the key sensor mechanism. <coughs> nanoscale objects by themselves are very difficult to handle and manipulate. You, you either use them as a bulk material, which you've heard quite a bit about this morning, or if you want to use them for things like sensors, you generally have to attach them to something else which is a microscale object and eventually interface that with the real world, and that's where microfluidics, which is the kind of one of the technologies we work on, work on, comes in quite a lot. We also do a lot of uh, very small-scale assembly and packaging. This is an example of a very uh, small-scale ceramic PCB that we can manufacture. We, can, we have uh, very high-performance uh, manufacturing technologies for doing that kind of stuff as well. If you move on, please, Brian. So why do people want to use M&T? Uh, I guess the key driver is, as we've heard, doing new and useful things. Um, so you can do, hopefully, realize new functions using micro nanotechnology. One of the things we find that's pretty exciting a lot of our customers, in fact, is the ability to take existing functions and shrink them down, make them smaller, make them, make them more portable and bring them to the point of, point of need rather than having them stuck in a laboratory or in a, a large facility somewhere. And particularly taking anal analysis to the point of use is an area I think that could be of great interest in the... Uh, and we've had seen, seen some interest already in the agricultural and forestry sector for doing that using, say, microfluidic devices to essentially create a lab on a chip which can be taken out into the field and used in situ to do an instant diagnosis on a, on a, on a, a bacterial organism or a tree or whatever. Um, the other interesting, exciting thing is by making things smaller, you can suddenly start to integrate more functions into, into one device. And that gives us the ability to create much more functional devices. The great classic example is a cell phone, which is becoming more and more complex every year. But uh, people like that idea and they want to apply it in other sectors as well. And finally, nanotechnology really is, allows you to manipulate at the molecular, molecular level. And I think you've heard a lot about that today, so I shan't say more about that. So what are the sort of challenges when you want to try and apply MNT? This is what we're here to do, is we're here to help people resolve those challenges. I guess one of the key things that we find is that MNT devices are pretty small. They have you know, active structures the size of a human hair or the size of a molecule. Uh, and really, if you try and use them by themselves, they're really very, very hard to use. And they just, uh, they're too small to manipulate and interface successfully with a macroscopic world that we live in. Um, so typically, we need, and also by themselves, they don't do, don't do everything you need them to do in order to create a useful functionality. So they have to be assembled and 
together with some other things like electronic components and other devices to create a small system that is actually useful and can function in the real world. Another challenge with MNT type technologies is that the technology itself is often very new. Um, and the supply chains that you need to build the different components don't exist or are very, very poorly established at the present time. So there's a lot of work on developing supply chains. We heard a little bit about that this morning in some of the, the previous talks as well. And that's one of the areas that ACAMP puts a lot of effort as well. Um, technologies tend to be multidisciplinary. So you're working with biologists, electrical and electronic engineers, physicists, typically on a project. And that, that leads to some fun. So I'm trying to get all those different groups of people to work together. We focus a lot on making sure we build suitable multidisciplinary teams. The technology itself also, because it's a very you know, leading edge technology, generally needs a state of the art manufacturing capability, which means that it's, it's a fairly expensive manufacturing capability. You can't use your average machine shop or, or cheap tools. So this can be quite a barrier for small companies trying to enter the technology is the, the cost of, cost of uh, the capital required to actually manufacture the products. Um, sometimes the market pool being, can be quite weak as well. You know, you've got existing incumbent technologies that uh, kind of perform the function adequately and to overcome that kind of inertia you've got to work pretty hard to get the, the market to, to accept the new technologies. And of course because you've got the, a difficult technology with lots of cost, capital costs associated with it, there's a very high cost and very often a high risk to bringing new products to market which can make it very difficult for those products to be successful. So ACAMP tries to help with all of those problems in one way, shape or form or another. Um, we're trying to make it easy for companies to engage in, in, product, uh, in the product development process to uh, access the expertise and equipment they need to develop new M&T enabled products. And I think that kind of covers a lot of the bases. So we actually have in-house uh, a full assembly and packaging capability, which lets you take your, your nano idea or your micro idea and turn it into a product. I've got one minute left. Oh dear. Um, we help set up supply chain limps. Uh, we help with, with business and market development. And uh, we provide easy and cost-effective technologies to access, access to technologies for regional, regional companies. Well, I won't talk about marketing business development. I think Ken touched on that this morning. We'll just quickly fly on to product development, which is the bit that I do. We focus on this area, engine assembly and packaging, product test, and in particular design for manufacturability, including a lot of test and characterization of our products to make sure that they really are worthy products and go to the market and will work successfully for our customers. So we have facilities both in Edmonton and Calgary with clean rooms in them. We have about 2,000 square foot of clean room in Edmonton and 1,000 square foot of clean room in Calgary. Um, these facilities are capable of doing everything from very small scale manual prototyping through to low volume assembly that will support you all the way into the early market phase of a new MNT product. Next slide. So some of the key things we do, simulation and design. We think this is a very, very important part of the design for manufacturability. Start off by really understanding your design before you try and even build something. We have access to ANSYS Multiphysics, which is probably one of the best multiphysics packages in the world, which lets us do a very thorough, thorough job of simulating a product before we even try and build it. We can do 3D visualization and uh, design using SOLIDWORKS as a 3D design package. We have some access to optical design. We do quite a lot of optical work and some uh, high-speed design for electronic design as well. And we also have not only just the packages, we also have at least two uh, really good experts in using these packages as well to help our customers and more people getting trained all the time. Uh, for us, design for manufacturability is a core philosophy behind all this. So I just talk, touch on our lab on a chip capabilities to give you a sense of the kind of things we do. Here we have the ability to make a design all the way from through the simulation, all the way from making the mold. So we have the ability to do a litho lithography and nickel mold making process, which we've just released into manufacturing. It's just starting to show, just starting to work pretty well. We can then Im emboss uh, chips. We have a large area hot emboss, which means we can produce good numbers of chips if we need to. And we have various other technologies to enable us to seal lids onto the chips, change the surface properties. And we've just very recently, I shouldn't say coming soon, we've now added a liquid dispense capability so we can dispense biomolecules into chip channels, should we wish to, to create uh, fully active bio devices. And the goal here is to make lab on a chip uh, type diagnostic devices. So I guess a quick move through some of the other capabilities. We have lots of, uh, oops, yeah, so we, pardon? I'm driving the time. Okay, we can just go back one, just want to mention the test and, Test and characterization, yeah, we have a whole range of test and characterization tools. Uh, I'll let you read that. It's a bit of an eye chart, but we can do everything from inertial testing using a rate table. This is more suitable for people doing inertial systems. Physical and failure analysis, we have a whole range of failure analysis tools, SEM with EDS, uh, we've added a real-time x-ray, and then all sorts of exciting things like that. We do a lot of reliability testing for our customers using high temperature ovens, thermal shock ovens, drop shock tests, and so on. Uh, electrical probe capabilities and lots and lots of optical capabilities as well. 
and just the next slide, we'll briefly check that one. Not only do we do have the equipment and the, the tools, we also do process development so that we can help our customers. So we'll do, we've developed several manufacturing process flows already. I've mentioned the microfluidics flow somewhat uh, already. That's something we've put together. We have a high temperature module assembly flow, um, ceramic manufacturing, laser dio packaging, vacuum packaging flows we've all developed. I guess the key thing is we can also customize it, these flows or we can develop new flows for our customers based on our tool set. So we have that capability in-house. And we have relationships with a number of key suppliers. We don't make the silicon chips. We rely on people like Nanofab or Microline to supply us for the chips. And that's it. Thank you very much. Sorry, it's a bit of a lightning talk. <laughs>